Hey guys, we're back. It's Ted Bogart with The Ted Show. And I'm very excited to have this returning guest back, Gabriel Pre Pricer. You got it. You got it right. See? Um, and I've known him for a long time, so it's my fault that I do not know how to pronounce his <laughs> last name every single time. He's with Opera Orlando, and he is a Grammy winner. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Opera for All. Um, I had a lot of people before we went live say, is opera still going on during the mm-hmm. pandemic? And so we're excited to have you back on the show, my friend. How are you? I'm I'm well, and thank you always for having me, Ted. It's good to see you again. I love seeing your your smiling face, man. You always well. Thank you. Same face. here. Same here. You've got a better background than I do. I like it. Uh, well, well, I came well branded today. Just to <laughs> well, I'm going to use that. I'm well branded today. <laughs> um, all right. So for people who don't know you, though. Give them a little background on you, maybe some history on, and maybe a journey on how you got to Opera Orlando. Sure. Well, I won't make it too long. You know, we don't have all day. Uh, but yeah, I grew up here. I'm, I'm an Apopka boy, a Florida native, born and raised. Um, went to school out of West Orange High School. Shout out to the West Orange Warriors. Was introduced uh, by my teachers out there to singing in chorus, to doing school shows. Thought maybe I would do the music theater Broadway route, but they're like, hey, you should probably audition for opera. I was like, opera? What's that? You know, guy from a kid from a popka? We don't have much opera <laughs> out there. And so I auditioned at Florida State University, fell in love with it right away. Just just loved the art form, the challenge of the art form. Had you not done opera before? I had not. No, I, I never even been to an opera. I'd seen some on PBS. You know, my mother played some for me. And you know, you hear opera in commercials, you see some in movies, but I, I never been to an opera. The first one I went to was when I sang in at college. And like I said, I was just really, I fell in love with it. It's kind of athletic, you know, singing without a microphone for three hours, the challenge of the language, the sets, the costumes, there, there's just so many things going on. It's, it's hard not to fall in love with. And so I did my undergrad at Florida State and then did my master's University of Houston, went on to start singing to different opera companies uh, across the United States, moved back home. The old Orlando Opera Company had closed down, so I got involved with kind of the diehard opera fans here and um, getting the opera company up and going again. So we we launched as Opera Orlando five years ago, where opera comes first, right? Not to be confused with the old company, Orlando Opera. Um, <laughs> Oh, is that the reason? That makes sense to me now. (laughs) Sure, sure. (laughs) And uh, yeah, it's been a crazy five years. You know, COVID aside, we'll talk about that later. We've we've gone from uh, a two hundred fifty thousand annual budget to one point five million annual budget in five years, and from two productions a year to six productions a year. And we're just very grateful, you know, that there's a great audience here in Orlando. There's some diehards who love opera. But then we also try and do some new contemporary things to reach out to the younger audience. A lot of free performances for kids as well. Lots of great families here. So, yeah, I, I truly believe opera's for everybody. And if we can get your butt in the seat, so to speak, you're going to fall in love with it, too. So tell people, you know, I think people, it, I always go back to that move, that movie with Julia Roberts, where you either love, love opera or don't. I think it was Pretty Woman. Pretty but Woman. I think yeah. that people don't know how to love it. I think... People are intimidated by opera. And so I think people don't even know where to start. And they don't realize that the music, regardless of you might not know the language, uh, the music is universal. So talk a little bit about how, because you talked about education a minute ago. How do we educate people? How do we get people to embrace it more and not be so intimidated by opera? You're exactly right. There's so many stereotypes around opera. People think you have to dress up or it's only for rich people or it's just fat ladies with the uh, <laughs> horns on there. Uh, so we, we try and show people that um, there are so many different types of opera and that opera is for everyone. For instance, we're doing our, our first uh, commission opera this year called The Secret River based on a book by Marjorie Keenan Raleigh. Uh, you might recognize that name. She lived in Central Florida. She wrote The Yearling, wrote Cross Creek. So we're doing an opera based on her children's book. And it's a story about an African-American family, hard times during the Great Depression, and their daughter finds a secret river and saves her family, saves her town. So I mean, it's like, what's not to love about that piece? 
And we have a local composer, Stella Sung, um, who works out at UCF. She's writing the music. Pulitzer Prize winning librettist Mark Campbell doing the libretto. Again, it's in English. It's a story about Florida. Um, there's just so many wonderful things about it. So we, we try to do a mixture. You know, we're going to do Traviata, which Pretty Woman is based off of, which is kind of a, a classical traditional opera. We're going to do La Boheme, but then also doing more contemporary things. Uh, we're doing a world premiere this month, actually, of Death of Ivan Illich, which is based on a novella by Tolstoy. Um, and it's just a one hour chamber opera, doing it at the Museum of Art and the Grand Gallery there. So sometimes people think, oh, we got to go into the theater. We got to wear our tux. I mean, this has appetizers beforehand, nice. drinks, desserts after. You get to meet the cast, meet the composer and the librettist that wrote this opera. Um, it's in a, a small venue, intimate venue. You don't have to wear a tux. You can wear your <laughs> jeans. I know us Floridians, we want to wear our sandals and our board shorts. That's fine. Yeah. Come as you are. Um, because really what opera is, is our legacy. It's our history through music, right? And, and so if we can just kind of convince people to get over the stereotypes, come and check it out. They'll hear that music like you're talking about, Ted. They'll fall in love with it. Music is that universal language. It's going to touch you. You're like, oh, I don't know why I was, <laughs> what I was so afraid of. It, they do. It's funny because I've had, you know, I've had you on before and I, I, I'm a big fan of opera, uh, but I had to learn it. And it's funny because people really do. They're like, God, how am I going to follow the story? Um, how am I going to understand what they're saying? And I just, nowadays though, if you think about it, a lot of people watch video on right. silent and you well, can see silent, the right. human emotions just by watching. So it's not the verbiage that comes out. It's, it's really right. how people are, are emoting during the, during the performance. And all of our productions, we have super titles above the stage. So if you're ever worried about, yeah, I don't speak Italian, I don't speak French, or sometimes when the singers are singing in English, I get it. It's hard to understand what they're saying because they're singing high cues or, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have that translation above the stage. There's also a synopsis in your program. But like you're saying, Ted, if you just listen, I mean, even close your eyes and just or, or, exactly. or watch the emotions coming out of the performer's faces, you know, like you'll, you'll feel it. You'll feel it. And that's what's beautiful about opera is the power of music. You can't, you feel it's so powerful. And the stories are usually incredibly powerful. I mean, I just, I find opera to be, it's different than any other performance art. And right. it just has, there's so much passion and history um, involved. What's your favorite? What did you, you perform? So, Obviously, people, let's talk about that because you, we mentioned it earlier, you're a Grammy Award winner. Um, congratulations. I might have that with me. Uh, you oh, might oh, have the oh, Grammy oh, Award. Let's see I'm it. Gonna bring it with me. <laughs> there you go. That is so beautiful. What was That's that really like deal. for you? Um, pretty surreal till this day. You know, um, I wasn't able to attend the actual award ceremony because I was singing on a gig. So I'm, you know, backstage about to go on for the show I was doing with Utah Opera out in Salt Lake City. I'm like looking at my phone to see if I won, you know, backstage. <laughs> and, and sure enough, I, you know, popped up. Someone texted me actually that, that we had won. And I couldn't like shout for joy because I'm like backstage, but I'm like whispering to my colleagues, hey. Um, and they, it's, and, I mean, they were all ecstatic for me. What did you win for? Tell people what the win was for. So, yeah, you can see it uh, imprinted here. It's um, Fantastic Mr. Fox, which is a relatively new opera, and it won Best Opera Recording uh, last year um, for, for the Grammy. And I was Farmer Bean in, in that cast. We recorded it up in Boston a few years back. Uh, so just a great piece, very whimsical, very funny, uh, fabulous music. And, and, yeah, as an opera singer, you don't think, oh, gosh, I'm going to win a Grammy. Right, because we don't record right. that. We don't record. It's usually live. So we did that recording, and I was like, "Oh, this is a fun opportunity to get to record." And then I never thought about it again. And sure enough, we got nominated for a Grammy. It was it was crazy. It was crazy. It's it's just such a big. It's a big deal. It's really a big deal. I mean, I think a lot of people will say, "Well, operas. There's only a small group of people that um, could could." Uh, participate in that but honestly opera is worldwide it's actually a big uh, genre it is it is no exactly right it, it is a worldwide 
genre and there's operas in all different languages. And I think American opera is underappreciated like Fantastic Mr. Fox or yes. like Secret River. So the more we can bring awareness to those American composers and that that opera is a living art form in our own country, the, the better. So I, I asked you earlier, but then I got off as usual on a tangent. Favorite to sing because you've performed so much favorite to perform in um, and explain why, because I think this, the reason why for every singer and every actor um, is really important for the audience to know. So my, my favorite role is probably Figaro in Barber Seville. I just love it. You know, and he has the famous aria, Figaro, 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 Figaro. And then there's uh, that same character in the marriage of Figaro. And that, that's one of the roles that I've done the most. It's just a, a very fun character. Um, but actually my favorite opera is Falstaff by Verdi. Um, I've, I've never done it. I've heard it many times. It, it's a role that I would love to do in the future. Um, there's just something about, it's one of Verdi's last opera. Verdi's one of the greatest opera composers of all time. Did Rigoletto, Traviata, Nabucco. But this one is really kind of through compose and it's a comedy, right? We don't really think of Verdi being a, a comedic composer. Right. Most of his operas are more on the serious side. And I don't know, there's just something about it. It just it just keeps going and going and going. Um, the story is based on Mary Wives of Windsor, the Shakespeare uh, story. So it, it's hilarious. It's absolutely <laughs> hilarious. Um, so one of these days, maybe we'll do it. We'll, we'll probably update it and maybe do it in English just so people get all the comedy. But you know, I, I've seen that a lot. I, you know, I've, I'm I'm half happy. I'm half happy about that because I think it will broaden it. Um, but I love hearing it in the original language. Um, yeah, yeah. There's something about the the beauty of Italian. I mean, it's yeah. a gorgeous language to sing because it only has five vowels. You know, I, I love <laughs> that it's good to do stuff in English because the audience understands it right away. Right? There's that immediacy. English is not a pretty language to sing in. I hate to admit it, folks. <laughs> no, I would. Yeah, I've seen it. That it, it just. I feel like I get lost more when I am listening to it being performed in Italian. Right. I get lost in a good way. I get lost in the story and really immersed and enmeshed in it. Uh, but, you know, I still want people to, to get to like it. So if getting to like it means you will uh, perform it in English so that people can understand it and feel a little more comfortable, that's a great thing. Actually. Yeah, and we try and we try and find that I'm, I'm plugging in my computer because my computer's dying. So uh, oh yeah, I had to do that earlier. The interest she's saving me and bringing me my charger. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but yeah, you know, we try and do a mixture of some operas in English and some in the original language, or you know, um, then again, new operas obviously in English too. But like Hansel and Gretel, which we just did, uh, we just finished, was originally written in German, and it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous in the German, but you know, you want to have young kids come to the show and you want them to understand it. So it's hard not to do that one in English because it's such Agreed. a great, so you kind of, you kind of pick your battles there. And I should mention that in case you missed Hansel and Gretel, cause it was, it did sell out uh, for us last week at the few theater, um, you know, limited seating with COVID. We do have it available online. That's something we started this year because of COVID investing in high quality recordings. So that way people can watch it from the safety and comfort of their own home. So keep an eye out uh, for Hansel and Gretel. You can go to our website, operalando.org, and, and buy access. It's only $25 per household uh, to watch opera from home, which is lots of fun. So you, we had talked about talking a little bit about COVID. Your pivot and your shift, how did that work in your world? Because obviously all performances stopped in live anyway. Yeah. Uh, what did you all do? So the first pivot was completely to online programming, right? You know, everyone was shut down, but we wanted to keep in touch with our patrons. So we launched a weekly uh, broadcast, kind of like you do, Ted. Uh, we called it the high note, just keeping in touch with people, giving them opera insights, showing clips of past performances, previews of stuff that was coming up. Um, and then we would typically do our big fundraiser, our gala uh, in, in early summer, and then a concert series at the end of the summer. We did all of that online and it was actually very successful. Lots of people tuned in. You know, we had people tuning in from England, from across seas, which we would never Amazing. have been watching it in person. Yeah, which was which was great. And our, our fundraiser was very successful. But then it came time where it's like, OK, you know, you can't really do opera online. 
in the in the real sense of the word. I know there is virtual opera happening, and that's great. That's great. But in the sense of costumes, sets, lights, rehearsals, chorus, prince, you know, orchestra, all those elements, there has to be an in-person element to that for all those things to come together. So we put a lot of COVID policies and protocol in place. Uh, we, we postponed some of our performance dates so we could take the time to do that. And we actually put on a full production of Deflator Mouse. Uh, uh, that's the Strauss operetta. It's a comedy, absolutely hilarious piece. Uh, we did that in December. So <coughs> ago, wow. Had the orchestra on the stage so they could be spread out and then had a scrim in front of them. And then the performers in the set were in front of that scrim. The performers were also socially distanced. Instead of having the chorus on stage, we actually pre-recorded the chorus. So then we had to synchronize the, the pre-recording, you know, wow. the audio and the, the video of the chorus with the live orchestra and with the live principals. That took a lot of Harry Potter magic. Can't even imagine. <laughs> um, and then, you know, weekly testing <laughs> for our cast, mask requirements, just, just a lot of you know, keeping up with the CDC guidelines, but it was such a fulfilling thing because we were able to have an audience all spread out there at the Disney theater at, at Dr. Phillips center, you know, 2,700. So there's plenty of room to spread people out and to see the people's faces and the audience hear their applause and, and hear their appreciation after the fact, they were just so grateful to have live theater and we recorded it. Right. So if you couldn't come in person, nice feeling safe so you can watch it, watch it from home and, uh, Come to find out, Ted, that we we were the first indoor full opera production in the U.S. since March. Wow. We were the first one. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. Well, you have the infrastructure, you have the experience and the knowledge, and you were <clears throat> able to pivot and pivot quickly. And then as right. you, as you, and I love the fact that you're able to do the productions and do them so that nobody can really say anything. Because, you know, that's what people say whenever I'm out and I go to an event. Ted, it looks like you're not socially distanced. Well, if you set it up the way you did, everything is socially distanced. It's perfect. Oh, yeah, plenty, plenty of room, plenty of room. And in the audience, they were required to wear masks, you know, um, and the same thing with, with Hansel and Gretel. But yeah, we got we got no complaints, you know, knock on wood, knock on wood. And we've been All right, so tell people how they can reach you, how they can get involved. Maybe they want to get their kids involved. Maybe they want to know uh, more about Opera Orlando. What's the best way for them to reach you? Yeah, our website is operalando.org. Uh, email info at operalando.org. I mean, I give my cell phone, but my wife might uh, not like that. <laughs> um, but we'd love to hear from you. Sign up for our email list. Like I said, we have a world premiere, Death of Ivan Illich, this month. Then we have Carmen coming up uh, April 1st. That'll also be at the Disney Theater, so people can be all spread out. And then we have a workshop of the new opera, Secret River, that we're commissioning. So you can kind of see how does an opera get put together um, and get to uh, meet the composer and, and meet the cast. So, yeah, we're all about um, just trying to make opera accessible and, and relevant. And you're doing an amazing, amazing job. All right, my friend, Opera Orlando. You guys go to operaorlando.org. It's scrolling across the bottom. Um, get involved. This is a great community for this. And um, you can reach out to Gabriel. He's always available. I will not give your cell phone out either. Uh, but one last question before we head out. Are your, uh, do you have a lot of people in your family, kids that are also vocally talented? I have two kids. Uh, I think we've talked about my kids before. They're now four and seven. Grace and four and a girl. They both love to sing. And what's funny, Grayson's already at that age where it's like, daddy, no singing, daddy, no singing. <laughs> right? and, and like singing's not cool right now to him, but I'll find him singing by himself in his room all the time. My daughter, luckily, she she still thinks singing is cool and she'll sing with me all the time. I love it. There's nothing like it. There's nothing, nothing like, like it. it. Nothing like it. They have like good it. voices. They have good voices. You know me, I'm like, maybe you could be a lawyer or a doctor <laughs> or something a little more sick. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. They can, they can do whatever they want. Um, They've got a gift. You're amazing, my friend. Thank you so much for all you do. Congratulations again on a Grammy win. It's amazing. OperaOrlando.org, everybody. Reach out. Thank you so much for being on. It's so great to see you, even though it's not in person. 
from this distance, from this distance. Yes, from this distance. Hope to see you at the opera online or in person, as well as everybody else. See you at the opera, guys. All right. See you at the opera, guys. Back. Bye, everybody.